three, two, one, let's go. <laughs> the way it kicks in is just perfection. Look at how this car just sits into the turns. Magnificent. Whoa. Whoa. Hello there everyone, welcome to another episode of DM Car Reviews. Today on our channel we have a 2024 Audi A4 45 TFSI Quattro. I've been driving this car for a few days, so let's fire her up and I will share all the impressions about this car throughout our test drive. But let's go take a look outside. A lot of my viewers love seeing Audi videos about the new Audi models. So here we go, here's another Audi episode. This time it's not an S5, it's an A4. But to be honest, I've been so impressed by this A4. And this is the direct competitor to the BMW 3 Series. In, in our case, that would be a 330i and the Mercedes C300. But the reason you probably clicked on this video is you want to see how this car drives and you want me to compare it to its direct competitors. And that's what we're going to do today. Let's take a look at the rear seat. So we have soft touch materials everywhere. Very pleasant, nice to touch wood. This right here is similar to VW, but let's hop in the back. So I'm 6'2", and I will say, for my taste, the seat is a little bit too upright, and it is to the tighter side, but still, there's some headroom here, and I'm 6'2", and there is enough space for my legs. So overall, if I were to sit like this, bend down a little bit more, I can actually sit decently comfortable. The question is, would I really want to sit here for more than an hour or two? Probably not. We have our uh, nets. For the storage i like how they put the hard plastic here in case the kids kick so it's not going to damage the leather we have a rear climate system cup holders same same thing as in the s5 great leather material and these seats can actually be had in the s4 and s5 too if you get the uh, warm weather package and they also come with ventilation now the seats in the S5, for example, or the A5 are way more comfortable in the bag than here, especially the S5. They feel much sportier, they hug you. But still, if you're taking some adults in the back with you, it's manageable. Let's go take a look at the trunk. As you can see, it comes right up. And the trunk here is of a decent size. It's, it's actually quite big for this class. You can definitely fit in a few suitcases. So it's a, it's a good size trunk. Now here, under the hood, you're going to find Audi's famous 2.0T four cylinder engine. And this is actually a magnificent powertrain. Over the years, it has become very polished incredibly reliable and it even powers the q7 and even with this engine the q7 moves pretty well so imagine how well this car moves and the s-tronic i've been very impressed with it too the the dual clutch that that audi has they call it s-tronic it it pretty much knows what i always want to do so it's always in the right gear it, it does what i want it to do the only thing that you have to remember is that you'll have to change the oil and the filter every 40,000 miles per Audi's recommendation. But it's a great transmission to live with. It has a nice launch control feature. 
The only thing that you will notice is just a little bit of delay off the line, but it's still significantly less than per se the Audi 8-speed models. Now here again, great cabin. Everything feels nice. And I especially like the way Audi doors close the sound. They just have a very rich, deep sound. But let's hop behind the wheel of this A4 and go over some features. Now this is a pretty base trim, so there's not gonna be a lot of features here. We do have Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, backup camera, and unfortunately the quality of the backup camera is very poor, at least in this model. I used to think that the S5 camera wasn't, it's, wasn't the best because of its distortion, but honestly here it's very hazy, everything is very blurry, so it could for sure be better. I think, I think BMW makes a million times better cameras, if we're comparing. Mercedes I think also has a little bit better quality on the camera. We have parking sensors, this is a mild hybrid, so we do have the auto start stop. We have four driving modes, comfort, auto, dynamic, individual. And here are all your settings, not that many. For 90% of the driving that I've done so far, I've just been in comfort, haven't really had any need to go to sport mode. This car moves beautifully the way, the way it is in comfort. We have an adjustable armrest, I love this. Good material here, so if you're here and you want, want to go to manual, then press park. It takes you right back. Very easy to use the volume button. You can skip songs. I also like the physical dials here for the temperature. And every click that you that you make in the Audi buttons, it has this haptic feedback. The Audi buttons just have this great feedback. Have our glove box. There we go. A black headliner. These can sometimes freeze when you press them. I had that in my S5 where they would just lag. We got our sunroof, a frameless auto dimming mirror with compass. Let's do a wiper test. We also have the heated steering wheel, heated seats, paddle shifters. I wish they were of course bigger and maybe like aluminum. Horn test. There's no navigation system here, so no virtual cockpit. This is pretty much as basic as you can get in terms of features. Now, I do like the physical gauges here, but I also love the Audi virtual cockpit, so I would probably go with the Audi virtual cockpit, although the needles do look super duper cool. The buns light up when I put my finger here. So setting off in the A4, I gotta say, this is one nice riding car. It rides better than an uh, than a RS5. It's very nimble, and it's got excellent feedback to it. These seats, personally, for me, are perfect. They are more comfortable than the S5 Sport seats. They have way more space, and that's what I love about them. The seating position is good. I can see some of the hood. There's excellent visibility all around me. There's a ton of torque here, effortless power. And thus far, I've met a few cars in Mexico. I've met a X5M, 555 horsepower, got a little hit, and he passed me when I was going around 90. Both of us were not using launch control. Then I met a Lexus RC350 on the freeway. I came up on him, had to slow down, and then he booked it, I booked it, and I did I did I did get him and I did pass him. But this car is capped at 127 miles per hour by the speedo, so about let's say 124, 125 by GPS. So it's not really the 130 mile per hour limit that they claim in the papers. I don't know, it just moves so well. The power is smooth, effortless, and the A4 walks away with authority from 98% of the traffic.
The only car that I was not able to really catch was a Camaro SS, the new one, with the 485 horsepower, I think. We were like really close till about 70, and then he started kind of moving away, but still, still wasn't was very good, I think. So 53 here feels like you're going maybe 30. You don't feel the speed at all. It isolates you from the world. The cabin is hushed quiet in this A4. It's definitely on par with the full-size luxury sedans like the A6, the 5 Series. It is very close and on that same level of refinement. Now the ride here is smooth, it is planted. It does eat bumps well, but it's not the softest. So it's got this healthy balance of sportiness and comfort. Now the A6 rides much smoother. The A6 just has that elegant, very yacht-like ride with a little hint of stiffness, which I just adore. Look at how this car just sits into the turns. Magnificent, absolutely magnificent. You can throw this A4 into any, any turn and it just sits like a champ. Let's check the speedometer accuracy. We're going to do our zero to 60 tests as usual. No idea how quick this car gets to 60, but I'm definitely thinking around maybe high fives, six. So my best time in a 430i convertible, again, convertible, not a sedan, uh, was 13.5 uh, on the quarter mile. Whoa, whoa. I'm not even touching the gas here right now. So that's that just goes to show how torquey this car is. so let's do our first run here let's come to a full stop i'm gonna reset the draggy all right three two one let's go no launch excellent pull 5.8 wow amazing absolutely amazing so even with a little half percent uphill we still did a 5.8 with no boost and by draggy, we did 5.77, valid. Zero to 100 kilometers an hour came in 6.07 seconds. And the one-eighth mile came at 9.1 at 78.87. And let's see what we, three, two, one, let's go. <laughs> the way it kicks in is just perfection. 5.65 seconds to 60. And there we go.
so 5.65 with no launch which is actually super duper impressive the uh non-mile hybrid version was a few ticks slower a few tenths it would be usually around six seconds and this is 5.6 so the mild hybrid definitely plays a good role here so by draggy we did 0 to 60 in 5.58 seconds even more optimistic than race box the 1 8th mile came in at 8.95 at 80.92 and the quarter mile came at 13.75 at 103.18 miles an hour and here we did 103.7 103 for a regular a4 <laughs> that's crazy actually i have a feeling we could maybe do a low 13s on this car but let's let's come back and try one more time so here's the run that you have all been waiting for <clears throat> i disabled uh, well i turned off the ac and i disabled the traction so it's uh the traction is set to sport we're gonna reset the draggy. Race box is also reset. We just want, I just wanna let the traffic through a bit. And we're going to launch this A4 and see how she does. All right. Let's go. <laughs> oh, wow. This is crazy. That was amazing, I, I gotta say. Well, let's see our times. So we did, by race box, we did zero to 16, 5.14 seconds, and the quarter mile 13.66, and the 100 to 160 kilometers an hour in 7.07. .07. That figure hasn't changed. We trapped Again, 103.5, same trap speed, nothing changed. And here by Draggy, we did 0 to 60 in 5.09 seconds. With a one foot rollout, that would be 4.8, at 4.82. One eighth mile came at 8.67 at 81.74. And the quarter mile came in at 13.45 at 102.81. So as you can see, our trap speed actually got worse. And this is the thing with a lot of Audis that their, their stock intercoolers are just not the strongest so after a couple of runs you can see how time just starts to well not time like the trap speed just starts to degrade and the time gets worse i've watched a couple of drag races that sam car legion posted where he raced a regular 330i with an a4 like this and the a4 just like walked well not walked but like got away from the 330i really quickly I'm gonna call cap on that because when I tested the 330i X drive, I also got a, a 13.5 and my trap speed was about like 101.5, 102. So it was very close. There's no way that if both cars are stock, one is just gonna walk away from the other car. It's not happening. And BMW's inner cooler is much stronger. So with BMW, you can do like five runs in a row and the car is still gonna show very consistent results. The handling here is light, but it is great and direct. You can still feel exactly what you're doing. And let's come here to the turn. Sits on the road, great. It's very hard to describe the G-forces that you feel when you take a turn fast because the camera just doesn't do justice for that. But look at how nicely it sits into the turn. So let's try our favorite turn, see what happens. All right, well, yes, definitely can't take it at 60. That's not, that's not gonna happen. Uh, oh, 50, 52, yep, same exact limit as the S5. One to one, same 53 miles an hour. 
I, I literally can't go any more on the throttle there because I feel like I'm just gonna slide out at that point and the car's gonna bend tip over. So from what you've seen on the performance numbers, I mean, there's nothing to mention here in terms of passing power. It's, it's so good, just so much power. As I've mentioned earlier in this video, I haven't even had the need to use sport. I just I just stick it in comfort and that's that's it. It does everything. At 85, 84, the RPMs are below 2000. So that does ensure that you have really good fuel economy and well today's trip hasn't been very efficient. But my average on the trip was like 33, 34. So normal driving, it feels like a very calm car. It doesn't want you to go race anywhere. It's just very nice and zippy. It's not provoking. As the S4, for example, which has that exhaust note to it, the burbles, the pops, the sports seats, it kind of kind of puts you in that position that it's like, yeah, let's go, let's go, let's do it, let's do it. But this is just very civilian, very calm. Like I said, for most of the time that I've been driving this A4, I've been driving it very lightly, very calmly, just like in this kind of pace. All the shifts are seamlessly smooth. It also has the adaptive cruise control, which works beautifully. Keeps distance, keeps you in the lane. So far, I've been absolutely loving it. Well, this wraps up our test drive for today. I wanna say thank you to everyone who watched this video. Please let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Would you get this or the three series or the C-Class? Like I said, I've really loved this A4. It's a definitely recommend car to get. Absolutely amazing experience. But make sure to smash that like and subscribe button. And till next time.